Welcome to episode 19 of COVID Comms. In the last couple of episodes, we've been talking about the structure that military leaders use to remain effective in the midst of a crisis. And so this episode, I wanna to talk to you about another model that is gonna allow you to control your attention in a crisis. One of the phrases that you would have heard thrown around over the past six weeks is that we need to control the controllables. And it's true. There is so much that is outside our control at the moment. We need to focus on what we can control in order to both cope and perform in the current environment. Those that do, well, they're not only going to survive this crisis, they're going to thrive in it. So one of the things that is most important for us to control is where we place our attention and our focus. So I want to share with you a model that's going to allow you to be more intentional in that space. It's from sports and performance psychology and I use it when I'm coaching both military aircrew and business leaders. This model is Nidifer's model of attentional control. It breaks down our attention into two dimensions. The first is width. Our attention can be very broad or it can be very narrow. Some tasks require us to be aware of a wide range of stimuli. The classic example is driving, but others may include strategic planning or market analysis or reading the room if you're a leader as you enter. You know, a sporting example for cricket fans might be a batsman assessing the placement of fielders before he plays his shot. Then there are other tasks that require a narrow focus, such as reverse parking or data analysis, or uh, individual conversation of the batsman watching the ball as it leaves the bowler's hand. A narrow focus is required for the specifics, for accuracy, and for detail. The other dimension of attention is direction, and that's on a continuum between internal versus external. Our attention can either be internal, focused on our thoughts, our feelings, our physiology, and our decision making, or our attention can be external, outside ourselves, focus on others, what's happening in a given situation or environment around us, or the behaviors of ourselves and others. So when you combine both of these continuums, you get a four quadrant matrix. So your attention and focus can either be broad and external, or broad and internal, or it can be internal and narrow, or narrow and external. You can use this to determine where you need to place your attention at any given time. I've spent time working with the Australian Air Force Loadmasters training to conduct air-to-air refuelling operations with the KC-30. In this image, you can see the boom extending out from the KC-30 to the F-16. Now, the operators will need to control that boom with a small joystick, and you can imagine the amount of attention and focus required during that process, considering the potential loss of life and multiple aircraft should there be a mistake. But the reality is that these operators will have to shift their attention throughout the entire process. They need to start off with a broad and external focus as they monitor multiple flight instruments and communicate with the rest of the flight crew. Then they need to shift to a broad and internal space as they are mentally reviewing all of the refueling processes and what they have to do. Then just before the two aircraft close, they should be shifting their attention to their physiology and calming their breath and oxygenating their body. And this is done in the narrow and internal quadrant. And then finally, as the other aircraft docks to be refueled, they need to have a narrow and external focus. They need to uh, block out all distractions and be totally focused on the end of that boom. Those trainees who allow their attention to shift back into the internal space will often find that distracting thoughts and self-doubt will creep in and interrupt their both focus and performance. So by using this model, we can clearly articulate where their attention should be and they can be more intentional about maintaining the focus that is required in that role. So how does this work for you? Well, in the midst of all the constant change and disruption in the dynamic environment that we find ourselves in, in the midst of all the noise from the experts, from government, from industry and on social media, we need to be really intentional about where we focus our attention. Using this model, you can go through a four-step process to maintain intentional focus and gain clarity. First, you need to assess the situation, which requires a broad external attention. 
then we need to shift from broad external to broad internal to analyze the information and data that we've gained during our assessment. Our attention needs to narrow so we can make specific decisions and prepare both mentally and physically for what we need to do. And finally, we need to act, executing the course of action that we have prepared. You can apply this at a personal, a team, or an organizational level. It is a great tool to clearly articulate what type of attention is required and where it should be placed so that you can focus with more intentionality and perform at a higher level. This is a mental model that is used by many military operators and elite athletes around the world to be able to maintain their performance under pressure and in the face of adversity and change. There's no reason why it can't do the same for you, so why don't you give it a go? Hey, was that helpful? If so, why don't you tell me what stood out to you the most and put it in the comments box below. Did you find it interesting? If so, why don't you share it? If you did enjoy this particular episode, well stay tuned because in a future uh, installment, I'm gonna be discussing how you can combine the OODA loop and this model to create a powerful assessment and planning tool that you can use across your organization. So stay tuned. Until then, lead well.